Hello and welcome to Pink in Maine. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Volly and I am sitting in for Michelle to show all of you a brand new product, new to Pink in Maine, hopefully new to you too, are these water gems, sparkling watercolors, and they come in a rainbow assortment with some additional neutrals included. We have 12 all together. So we have this beautiful sunny. We have citrine, which is a little bit more of an orange. But as you can see, you get a lot of the yellow hues in that as well. Flamingo's this beautiful pink. We have this ruby, which is like an earthy red. Rhodolite, it's this deeper, rich red. And then this emerald brings in this green. But you can see when we speckle that powder directly on that wet paper, it has a few of these other pigments. A little bit of blue it looks like in that. This one, the Caribbean, which is our aqua or teal, has a little bit of the green pigments to come up with that hue. Sapphire is this beautiful blue. Oh my gosh, that looks like the depths of the ocean. Unless, of course, if you're in Key West, because we're down here in Florida, y'all, we have this beautiful teal also. We have this eggplant, gorgeous purple. And then we have this shimmery black, which is almost an industrial gray or platinum. It's according to how the light hits it that you would be able to see. So if the light hits a certain way, you get these beautiful sheens. Like this emerald even has it. It almost looks like a little bit of gold. I don't know if the camera is picking that up. But we have this latte, which has, you can see as I speckled here, has a little bit of orange. It also looks like it has a little bit of gray in there. But when you brush it on, you can't really see much of those other colors once they're combined. And then of course our Milky Way. This is where my mistake is, y'all. Dark sky, when I originally decided how I was gonna lay my colors out, Milky Way was gonna be here, Latte was always gonna be in the middle, and then dark sky was gonna be over here. And then last minute I decided to change and put the darker dark sky next to the eggplant. That was a set of watercolors on watercolor paper. An additional one here is actually on Bristol Smooth because that can take a good amount of water too. And I hopefully, nope, I did the same thing. Today I'm just introducing this fun new product. In addition to these Water Gym Sparkling watercolors, we also have a brand new set of Easy Flow water brushes. This is a set of six. They're really fantastic because there's a variety of sizes for any project. I'll just show you a, a couple here. I'll open up this pack. So you have a wide brush. And I'm gonna tell you, I have a ton of different watercolor brushes or water holding brushes. And my hand, I'm getting a little bit of arthritis and I always have difficulty squeezing to get excess water. These have this nice little push button and they are just so simple to use and make it a breeze compared to what I had to deal with with some other brands on the market. So you have that wide brush tip. Here you have an additional wide brush with a little different width. Then here you go into a smaller width. So here's an additional one that comes more to a point. Just a couple more here. This one's a little shorter and tufted. So this one set would take care of all your watercoloring needs. One thing I will show you that we were able to do quickly, just to give you an example of what these can do, this is an emboss resist. We just created a butterfly background to accommodate an A2 size card, and we just placed our butterflies here. 
in this Misty. And we use this sticky mat, which is great to hold your watercolor paper in place. And then we were able to, because we did this also in black, so we used the VersaFine and the clear and place those down and recreate these backgrounds. And that set is called Butterfly Sketches. And that's one fun thing. And if you don't have a lot of big background stamps and you're wanting to create some of these watercolor backgrounds, it's just fun to create your own background using smaller stamps and that's what we did here today. So we're going to just give you a little taste by doing a background here. So here I have one prepared and we are just going to take our water bottle and I am just going to spritz and we're going to just pick out a few colors. I'm going to pick out Sunny, Flamingo, Sapphire and eggplant. And I'm also going to use that fan brush. Very little goes a very long way. You're going to see that. So I have some water on the, and I am using watercolor paper today with this project. As water dries on it, on each of these uh, types of cardstock, it gives it a different concentration and it gives it a different softness as it dries. So there is just a little bit of the sunny. Here's a little bit of the flamingo. And you can kind of see how this pink is going to go really good. Of course, we'll get some corals as those two blend. So we're not going to get any muddy things going on there with the color. I'm going to add a little bit of sapphire because, of course, the blue and the yellow are going to make some green. And then that blue mixing in with a little bit of the or the sapphire mixing in with a little bit of the flamingo is going to create a nice purple hue. And then last, I'm going to put eggplant here, which is this deep, beautiful purple color. And now if I had a little bit more water on this card, you would see this flowing a little bit more. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to take our brush here again, and I am just going to spritz, and you can see where it's a little bit more pixelated down here, where you just have a few of the pigment powder sitting on the paper dry. And as we spritz them, we get that pigment moving all around. Isn't that beautiful? What a fun scene. And you could stop there and let that dry. You could add more water and you're going to get different, softer looks. You're going to get a little bit less of this granular, pixelated area as you decrease or hold back water. And then as you add, it's going to blend and smooth out. So that's just a quick example using these beautiful Water Gym Sparkling Watercolors here. And... As I showed you, we'll set that aside to dry and clean up our mess. So it's really good to have, when you're working with these, something wet that you can clean. I just have a baby wipe here. Here we go, I'll bring that back. And as that dries, you can see here, we have a little bit of that area where we have a little granular pixelated look, and then it just sort of blends. Um, I don't know if the camera is picking up that sheen, but you get this beautiful, and especially if you take this out in the sunlight or near a window, you would be able just to see that sparkle on that card base. What we are going to do, just to show you, I'm going to move one out of the film here, and then this one, we're going to go ahead and spritz. And you can see, see a little bit of pink there. I don't know if the camera picked that up, but the powder here is in the air because we're I've been working here for a few minutes with these powders 
and that stuff will just be picked up and moved to other surfaces. So you're going to want maybe wear gloves. <laughs> I'm okay with getting a little bit of ink on my hands, um, but definitely protecting your surface. A glass mat would be a great thing to work on. Um, we don't have one here today. So what I use is a paper page protector. Now this is used for scrapbook pages and it's just the sleeve. I took some white poster board, stuck that in there so I had a nice white background. So we are going to just take a little bit of our powder here. We're gonna start with Sunny and we're gonna make sure that we're putting some of the pigment, like I said, a little goes a far way on any project. I'm just gonna put a little bit there and I'm gonna put another color next to that that is going to just not create a muddy background, but that blends really well with that yellow. So you know I have the flamingo here, this beautiful hot pink, right? And this will mix with the, the yellow pretty well, and it will create nice little orange and coral backgrounds. And so for this yellow, I'm thinking about sapphire. So we get a little bit of that yellow blending with the blue to make a little bit of green. And if that blue gets into the flamingo, we'll just get little bits of purple. And then I'm gonna take the eggplant, which is that deep purple. Beautiful hue. And you can see what the water is already doing here. So we'll just add a little bit more of that eggplant down there and maybe just to finish it off i have a little quarter i could totally leave it like it is add a little water you know what let's do that let's leave it like it is i'm going to take my spray bottle and i am just going to spray and add a little bit more water especially in this area where it doesn't look like i got a lot of water and of course you could tape this down for my use today, it's going to be fine. And once I set this aside to dry, and I tell you, you could, if you're in a hurry, you could use a heat gun to set this. But if you have time, just let it sit naturally and dry. Because it just does it. That water will continue to work with that pigment. And as it starts to get absorbed into that paper, it just starts to do beautiful things. So that is our wet paper so using our water gems dry on a wet surface so i'm going to set that aside to dry and then i'm going to use a little bit of just a wet cloth here i have my baby wipe certainly any wet cloth would work we'll just clean that up there and I have just a little bit, you can see just maybe a little bit of color still left on that. So I am going to use, and I love these y'all, the Scrub It Clean set of two cleaning cloths is how this comes online and in our store locally here in Palmetto, Florida. So now I'm going to take my watercolor paper here. I'm going to use the same colors because they blend so well together. And I'm going to take a little bit of the Sunny. And I have some examples that I'm gonna show you later, um, and you're gonna be surprised. I didn't use all the same colors that I'm using today, but you can get just such a wild assortment of backgrounds to be used on any project. And we are going to show you in another video just some different projects that we've done here at Pink and Main, and hopefully inspires you to get a set of these and do some crafting and watercoloring and creating. So much fun. I have just been just consumed, <laughs> to say the least, playing with all of these water gems. Just having so much fun. And so this fan brush, you see how it's dry and just picks that up. I have a little bit more pigment on there. I can just move around. So here we are. We have our dry watercolor background and we've just added the dry pigments. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my trust my little spray bottle up here. And 
And look at that. Now we could leave it there if we wanted to. And you would get this variety of where things are starting to blend. And as we move this to dry, some of this color is gonna to continue to move where we have some water pooled. And then we would have this speckled, almost pixelated look. And look at the beautiful assortment hues of color in there. You have some blue, some pink, some purples, and that's all coming within the flamingo. And you can see how this stuff just travels about. Or we could just add more water and create more movement. So you just have to get these and just create your own masterpieces. I'm gonna set that aside to dry. And I wanna show you, I wanna bring back just the piece we did earlier. Now it's not completely dry yet. And I would suggest when you're working with these, having a little paper towel so you can dab up extra water. But I can take a little bit there and just dab that up. But see how that has started just to spread the pigment in that and just create these soft, beautiful, gosh, just uh, this movement almost on the card of color. And I just love what water does here. But one thing you may not be able to see is the beautiful sparkling shimmer that these powders actually have. Hopefully with a couple of examples I show you later, camera will be able to pick that up. Now, with what I have left, oh no, no, we don't waste that, right? So we can go back in here. We can just add some more water. Look how fun that is. Just on, on a, our little protective pad here. And we can get another sheet of paper. And what I have for you today, and I'm gonna show you some samples in another video of different smash techniques, right? We can go in there, and this is the Bristol Smooth. Look at that. And y'all, it may look like a hot mess right now, but you put this aside to dry, and I'm telling you, you are gonna get a work of art. You're gonna, so we are just simply smashing, picking up some of that color, I'm getting a little bit of mudding, but you'd be surprised once this dries on here, how beautiful even some of those muddy areas are going to be. I'm going to maybe pick a little bit more blue here. And oh my goodness, boy, I know Easter's over, but I'm seeing Easter eggs. I'm seeing some beautiful spring, some pastel, beautiful backgrounds with some floral sketches on top of that. But we'll set that aside to dry. So many, and we have more here. Like we wouldn't have to stop, but I'm gonna stop for now <laughs> and clean this up and just corral some of these pigments, but it does, it just, it tends to wander. So you wanna have an area that's easy to clean and wipe up. Thanks for joining me today. You can find these products and more at pinkandmain.com or at your local retailer. Until next time, keep living the creative life. Oh,